And now, live from our Smokehouse studio, it's time for Real Estate Jerky. All your real estate questions answered by our provocatively lean expert hosts, Edward Ed Parco, MBA, veteran, and president of Lending for Living. We'll give you something to chew on. Real Estate Jerky is on now. That's my California. Thanks for joining us here on Real Estate Jerky. I'm your host, Ed Parco, President of Letting You for a Living, along with Marlene Chaplin, my trusty sidekick and co-host. We're on the road keeping things real and relevant throughout Stanislaus, San Joaquin, Merced counties, and into the foothills. Our studio is wherever we have a solid Wi-Fi connection and our fabulous engineer, Mike Murray, and the incredible radio signal of iHeartMedia and the station, KFIV. We always bring you something to chew on here at Real Estate Jerky, and today we'll be talking about the future of constructions in the Central Valley and women in construction. If you have any questions and you want to get your answers, please text or call me at 209-404-1915. Again, 209-404-1915, or email us at Radio Real Estate Jerky. Hello, Marlene. How are you doing today? Hi, Ed. Well, I'm pretty excited about today's show and our guest. Um, it's a subject uh, and a program that you've wanted to have for some time, uh, construction in the trades, and particularly women in construction. Um, so talk to me or talk to us. Why the big interest, Ed? Because it's something that you've wanted to do for quite a while. Uh, I came across a group of women doing a house in Utah called She Built Home. And basically they, it was all the women in trades and they come there and do their trades whatever it is, volunteer their time, and then they would sell the house. And then that money would go towards um, a scholarship for women to go to trade schools to be, get in the trades, which I didn't realize how hard, you know, that there wasn't women in this trade. Right. right? Any of the, any of the building trades, it's, right. the numbers are um, I, actually me and my numbers. I'm sure you have them. I do. <laughs> you know, I, do. I just like that stuff. You know, you'd think I'd be better at money than I am, but uh I love the numbers. And so, yeah, women in trades today. Now, these numbers, obviously, kind of always our numbers, statistics are old because we have to see those things in hindsight. So these numbers are from 2018, um, which are the most recent numbers we have for this kind of thing. 4% in the whole United States, women in the trades, 4%. And um, what's crazy is there's not as big a gap between the women that are in the trades, which I found fascinating. So um, loving dads, fathers, grandfathers, husbands, you got a, a, a female in your life who maybe is a pretty handy one. This is a really good direction or a career change to go into because the, the wage gap is insignificant. And it's primarily in the management side of the trades. So for example, if you've got a superintendent or something, then the wage gap gets to be a little bigger, but there's not that many. I mean, when I was trying to find out what the wage gap was, I mean, I could find like three women in the country that the numbers were posted to compare their wage on, a, on an admin level in the trades. So really. So we don't really know if there's- a No, yeah. I, I kind of doubt that yeah. there really is a gap any bigger um, that was the only gap I even remotely found. So, but there is really essentially no gap. So if you're good with a hammer, good with a welder, good with a, you know, even plans or any of that, and you and female in this, it's amazing. Um, and um, there's a lot of handy women out there. I, I've known a few over in my time that were um, very handy. As far as when I say handy, you know what I mean. Anyway. No, I know. I took, I got it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and the problem is, I mean, right now, these types of jobs, huge vacancy. They need huge. so many people because they're saying that the, you know, people these days, they want to work in air conditioning. They don't want to go out in the heat. Well, you know, it's not that hot in San Jose right now. Um, <laughs> it's only in Modesto. So, I mean, I know a lot of people who are in trades and they make really good money. Well, let's talk about what is good money. You see it because you see people's wage statements when they're buying houses and things. The only people who make more money than them is nurses. So that's another <laughs> place to go into. And there's still a big nursing shortage. Oh, yeah. Huge. Crazy. I mean, it's travel nurses make $110 an hour. Yeah, it's a crazy. Um, so let's get an idea. And again, 
let's like the our friends out there, these are older numbers because it's always we're always looking backward. And the last few years, getting the numbers from the last few years because things have so been so crazy because of the pandemic. Um it, it, most of the numbers I could find were 2018-19. So uh median electricians, um, highest 10% of electricians, and I'm going to quote those numbers because in California, we are on the high side always. Mm -hmm. Are you ready? 92,000 a year, 2018. Starting? Uh, No. uh, uh, Starting wage is 57. Average is 57. That's average. That's like you don't know anything? Apprentice? Correct. Apprentice. And then I looked up in the um, help wanted right section for uh in the trades you ready yeah that was even the more i was like wait a minute too bad i'm so old i might <laughs> i might get in the trades myself um it's crazy um starting pay apprentice you ready carpenter mm-hmm. san jose ready 62k wow. plus benefits for an apprentice because there's just no one out there so um you're listening to Real Estate Jerky here on Power Talk 1360 KFIV with our host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran, mortgage advisor, and president of Lending for Living. You can reach out to Ed at 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915 or visit lendingforliving.com. Or you can email us at radio at realestatejerky.com. So it was... Again. All right. Ready? Mm-hmm. And here we go. And so uh, the other thing that was stunning to me uh, that tells me that the trades are a giant career, good move for anybody, young person out there, or the average age, um, part of the problem, why is what they call it the graying of the trade profession in America, average age, 87% of those in the United States, and it's older in California, 87% of those in trades are over 51 years old. Wow. <laughs> Sounds like the mortgage industry. Over 51 years old. That's the mortgage industry. That's the real estate industry. Uh, median wages for carpenters, starting pay, 52000 And we And I just told you, I found a $62,000 help on it. Right. Um, and that average, wasn't, hold on, that wasn't union jobs either. No, no, no. Because there is, no, there is like no. pay for government and pay no. for this and this mm-hmm. pay rate. Yeah. I, I talked to Tom in our, in our, in our rotary and, he, and mm-hmm. he's telling you what they have to pay at certain jobs. It's mm-hmm. just ridiculous for someone moving stuff that has no, not even, you know, starting out how much they make an hour just to move stuff. Yeah. Move it, move it from one pot. Yeah. Like a yeah. hod carrier or something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. HVAC, uh, uh, 75,000. 75,000. <laughs> HVAC is where it's, it's at. A, it's a 19. We're, we're going to have the expert in here in a minute and she can tell us some more. And then we had Vicki on, um, Dr. Trask from mm-hmm. MJC and their program over there for um, trades and certificates. It's incredible. It is such an opportunity. It's phenomenal. Um, so one of the other questions I had for you, Ed, is have you seen it? Um, affecting the building industry? I mean, is that something that you think is partially attri- partially attributing to why we're not able to get homes built and things done? I th- there's so much out there right now. I mean, you got, you have the government side of it, you have the supply chain issue of that, then you have the pe- shortage of people. And it's not that it's the shortage of people, it's just we paid people not to work for so long. So we have to get out from underneath that. And that's really hard to get out from underneath when you pay someone to be home forever. And what's crazy with that, one of the stats that I found too, is the majority of the shortage for trades. Actually, no, I'm sorry. The majority of the work in the trades is actually in the private sector, not government. I thought it would have been. You mean doing government jobs or actually work for the government? Correct. Doing government jobs. So uh, public works is what those, what would be falling under government. 19% is public works jobs. The trades are in, right? Mm -hmm. Where the majority of the jobs and the 68% was private sector. Wow. Well, I know the city of Modesto is short, you know, they need people. Yeah. So I was, I was, um, I'm just saying in general, I think it's across the board everywhere. People are, we're short with needing employees and people wanting to come in and work. Yeah. So it's, um, 
it's a pre- it's pretty cool. I'm I'm excited. I'm really excited to focus on this and well, excited for you. And thanks let's for bring her in. bringing it to the show. So how'd you get involved in the trades? In the past, those kinds of skills were passed on from family member to family member. When we come back, we'll be talking to the executive director of the organization most affected by this huge gap in tradesmen. And I bet you wouldn't have thought of it. I wouldn't have if I didn't know her. Valley Builders Exchange and all the contractors in the Valley. And guess what? We're going to find out what are they doing about it? And how does skilled craftsman shortage affect the industry? And so much more with our host here at Parco when we come back in about three minutes. You can change the way you live out the rest of your life with our new reverse mortgage products from Lending for Living. Our loan limits are the highest available. Call us today at 209-846-9270 or visit LendingForLiving.com. Welcome back. I'm Marlene Champlin, sidekick to our amazing host, Ed Parco, here at Real Estate Turkey on Power Talk 1360 KFIV, where we always give you something to chew on. If you've got questions for Ed, just dial 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915 or visit LendingForLiving.com. And now, surprisingly knowledgeable and passionate about skilled craftsmen and women. Um, the executor direct, exec, I said that wrong. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. The executor director, <laughs> the executive director of Valley Builders Exchange, Christine Schweiniger. Hi, Christine. I'm Hello. so glad you're here. I'm super excited to be here. This is really fun. I always wanted to know behind the scenes how this worked. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still like enamored or you're like, this is it? <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it. I think it's great. I get to watch Ed live on sometimes LinkedIn. So it's kind of neat to be now be sitting here. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, this is used to be the conference room. Now it's a studio. <laughs> Christine, I have a question because I know you through Rotary and I've known you for before. How long have you been in the the Valley Builders Exchange, or how long you've been knowing about trades? So um, I was brought on probably about two and a half years ago. And right, probably four or five months prior to COVID. And when it comes to experience, the only experience that I had really, it's a 501c3. Mm -hmm. So we're a membership organization and I came from the chamber world, which kind of goes hand in hand. Uh, We have, you know, it's a membership organization. We offer classes for the construction industry. We have events just like a regular nonprofit. And the Valley Builder changes for everyone. Right? Valley Builders has been around for 75 years. And, wow. it, and it really is geared. We're, we're really excited. We're celebrating our anniversary this October for 75 years. And um, we originally started downtown Modesto, but now we're on Kansas. And really it was started because it was a place for all construction people to come together, look at projects and look at bids and network with each other and have the ability to you know get jobs. Wow. What's the biggest challenges? Um, right now, I would probably, when talking to a lot of our members, as with everyone, I think everyone's kind of dealing with it, but it's a lack of skilled laborers. Um, everyone is just having a hard time building or filling those spots. All right. So we were talking about the biggest challenges, skilled labor or any labor, right? Right. Yeah. You know, and I think a lot of our members, I like, I, I'm not the, the, the professional in this industry. My members are. And I, when I go out and meet with them and try to find out what is it that we're lacking as we move forward. And it's always the same thing. If we can just have a warm body who's willing to learn and work, um, that would be, I mean, they're willing to train. So, and we're talking about different industries, not just one, all industries in the construction. Yeah, but the construction is into everything. Right. You know, I mean, it's, then that's one of the issues. So how do we fix that? Well, um, when you're looking at, you know, infrastructure, we have to really um, place it as a priority because when we, you know, focus on infrastructure, then that helps create more jobs you know, and partners, and um, it really helps with our suppliers, which then really helps our local economy. So, you know, different things that we can do, you know, also encouraging that not all um, kids or students um, 
are going to go to a four-year college. And there are some that we have to realize that they are good with their hands and they want to work with their hands. So we need to really get behind them and support them and um, give them the opportunity to go to the different trade schools. And now even with MJC, they're offering a lot of trade um, programs as well. So did you have something, Marley? I'm sorry. I was going to do it. Go for it. <laughs> You're listening. <laughs> You're listening to Real Estate Jerky here on Power Talk 1360 KFIV with today's guest, Christine Schweininger, Executive Director for Valley Builders Exchange at Modesto. You can reach out to Christine at Valley Builders Exchange via their website. Ready? It's valleybx.com. That's valleybx. Dot com. And if you've got questions for our, our host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran and mortgage advisor and president of Lending for Living, you can reach out to Ed at 209-404-1915. That's 209-404-1915 or visit lendingforliving.com or email us at radio at realestatejerky.com. Christine, one of the things that I am amazed about is, you know, we talk about working with your hands. We talk about the trades and in the past, those things were not thought of as uh, um, good careers, paying careers. Right. That is so not true today. Correct. Or it was actually the hidden skill. What I mean by that, it was, it's, it's amazing job, but it was hard to get into too, right? In certain places you had to know somebody right. to be able to get in and, 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 and it was much harder when it was a, when we had less I should say more people working. We have less people working. We were paid not to work for a few years. Not me. I wish I was paid <laughs> not to work, but other people. And so that one of the biggest things I keep hearing is people want to be paid to work inside of air conditioning and don't want to work outside. Is that what? Oh, well, that, that might be true, but it, you know, the, the, when I talk to different ones, it's not always a hammer and nail on the side of the wall. I mean, there's so many, when you look at the world, you know, construction industry, there's a whole list of jobs, you know, there are, you could be a construction, you could be a plant manager, you know, there are so many different jobs that are available. So, you know, I don't know if everyone is hundred percent happy with their job. I mean, you have to look at your job and they say, well, I wish I could change this or change that. Um, but at the end of the day, if you have a family and you're trying to take care of your family, um, you know, construction pays well. And if you're the one that didn't go to the four-year college because you love working with your hands and you can create and build, well, then you can sustain your family and be proud. Now, I want to go to, um, I see on here, you guys have scholarships or something for skilled work programs. Correct. But, well, and I, I really want to get into women in construction and I'm not, it's just something that I've talked about for a while. Right. So the scholarships over the years, Valley Builders has given over 200,000. Uh, last month, I think we gave out 23,500 to 14 students. Wow. And it was exciting. Our scholarships that we give out once a year, that program is for our members, children or our members that, you know, they send it out to the company. Um, and so they're available to, you know, apply for the scholarships. The second scholarship that we offer is for our women in construction. Those are all for women that are in the trades. So they apply for that. And last year we gave out quite a bit and this year we look forward to giving out more as well. Yeah. Because how I got involved with this is I saw, and I <clears throat> talked about in the beginning, uh, she built homes was a yes. organization out of, um, Utah where they were building a house and they'd have all the women in trades come in right. and they donated their time. They got all the supplies donated and everything. Then they turned around after they were done and sold that house and then put all that money towards scholarships. Right. What a wonderful program. And I'm excited, Ed, because of you, I bought my ticket. I will be in San Francisco tomorrow and she will be there with the book. And I did buy oh, that really? book as well. So I'm super excited. I really thank you for that because, you know, it opened my mind to kind of going, thinking outside the box and what else can we do here so i'm super excited to go out there hopefully meet her well because i mean you could technically do the same thing here under uh -huh. your umbrella and build and you know get the land donated get the stuff donated and have a bunch of women who for in trades to come in do the same thing turn around sell it and put that money towards your scholarships for women absolutely and it takes time you know like mm -hmm. i said i've been there two and a half years and since i've been there we've doubled our programs and really started looking at a different direction for builders you know the heart and soul has always been the plan room but as we're moving forward and as we're looking at what's important we have to start looking at our partners, our trades, what can we give back and how can we help with our sustaining these trades? And I think tapping into the, the women and 
industry, you know, into this industry, I think you just got to be careful because as I find, um, they do a very good job <laughs> and they do better than a lot of us. And I won't say who that is, but a lot of us, and, um, you just have, you know, mm. so if they, if that's what you want to do, why not? You know right. what I mean? Use your hands, be outside all the time. What the heck? Well, not only that, but you know what? I, I find the trades, um, to be conducive to family life, mm -hmm. um, because you you're up early, you're out early and you're home early. Right. I mean, Sometimes, but with all the overtime right now, yeah, but, but I mean, for the most part, for right. the most part, my home, my husband's home before me always. <laughs> but I, what I find is the worst person to build something at their house or do something in their house is somebody in construction. <laughs> I'm not going to lie there. It takes forever. How long have you been working on the remodel? Five years. Probably kid always needs new shoes, right? right. Yes. <laughs> and you know, Ed, to go back to the women in construction, I'm really excited. Uh, we're hosting our, our third annual uh, women in construction. And this year, uh, Mary Tigert is our keynote speaker. We always have three different women that with different industries talk about their, how they landed and how their career path um, got them more to where they're at now. Uh, that's that event is really focused on education. That's where we give the scholarships. That's where we encourage anyone who knows a young girl who is interested. Um, we have paid uh, sponsorships for tables for those that want to attend. And so it's just going to be a great event. I'm really excited about it. And we're going to talk some more about that event and women in construction, uh, Valley Builders Exchange, 75 years of supporting and improving how the Valley's contractors build, and now they're helping build careers. So we'll talk more with Executive Director Christine Schweininger and our host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran and president of Lending for a Living. If you've got questions about the real estate market or really just about anything to do with acquiring a home, please call Ed. 209-404-1915, or you can visit lendingforliving.com or email us at radio at realestateturkey.com. More exciting news about the building industry and real estate when we return. There's always something to chew on here at Real Estate Turkey, so don't go away. Our new reverse mortgage product limits can change the way you live out the rest of your life. This is Real Estate Jerky on Power Talk 1360 KFIV. I'm Marlene Champlin, trustee sidekick to our amazing host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran mortgage guru and president of Lending for Living. Picking up where we left off with our very, very cool guest, executive director of Valley Builders Exchange, Christine Schweininger. We were talking about scholarships. Um, we were talking specifically about women in construction and the scholarships that you have and the program you have for women. Um, Christine, how does uh, somebody who's got a, 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 a grad high school graduate or somebody get involved right now with that? Well, um, we hope that, and we're sending it out. We hope that we're putting the media release out there, but you know, it's a great opportunity if a teacher says, Hey, you know what? I have three girls that are in our class doing well. Um, and the, you know, cause there are certain programs that are, that are geared toward the construction in the high school. And if they submit their names or tell the students apply for the um, scholarship that comes up, um, we have no problem giving funds out because we want to encourage and help more young girls or women even going back into the trades. Um, so we have a great committee that looks over those um, scholarships. So I just say apply as many as we can possibly get. And you know, the exciting thing are a lot of our members are now wanting to partner in that and also double on the scholarship. Ooh. So we're really excited about that. Mm. So this not, these aren't just small 250, 500, which are definitely helpful. We give out pretty good scholarships. Of Mike, we were, we were making conversation and Ed, you brought up and said it was good. Um, I'm pretty handy. I grew up on a dairy and I grew up with all brothers and, 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 and I was encouraged to work. <laughs> and then when I grew up, you know, but that wasn't something that women were encouraged to do. Right. And there's girls still aren't encouraged in that direction. However, if you've got a girl who's very teachable and athletic or strong or not afraid to get dirty and, uh, maybe she was in athletics. I think that, uh, and teachable there's career opportunities right now, especially if you're a single mom out there and you happen to, or, or somebody knows when I can't say it loudly enough. These people are willing to teach. So if you've got somebody who's in your wheelhouse right now in the female persuasion, 
uh, that would be a great candidate. Yes. Right. Absolutely. It, it, well, I was laughing when you're saying that because I was thinking one of our biggest, uh, one of our members who was telling me, he goes, you know, Christine, I look out and, you know, 15 years ago, it was predominantly a lot of men and more women in the office. That's kind of switched. And he goes, I have to say, just like Ed said, they're hard workers. They're dependable. They're on it. I'm just willing to train and put them out there. And they're making just as much as the men now. And that's really starting to shift. I mean, that was very different maybe 20, 30 years ago. We might be still behind, but it's the pay is still well. Oh, and it the gap was is non-existent. Right. I, I did research, right. Christine. I don't know if you heard um right. we were talking to those numbers. Mm -hmm. What I could find even uh 2018 and 19. There's, there's no gap. There's, right. it's not, it's, it's so minuscule between, and that's, that is not true of any other career path. Right. And I think that's why more women are choosing when I go to and do tours recently, I was at Haggerty and he introduced me to this team of women, Collins electrical, same thing, all these women. I'm just like, wow, this is amazing. And I have to say, we, we also host a trades day for students. We hosted our first one in partnership with our, um, C or Cal the, our, I'm sorry, our Builders Exchange in Sacramento, and it was a great event. We had over 300 students from all over have the opportunity, hands-on, you know, climbing and welding and cement lane, lane and talking to different ones that are in the construction industry. And there were, few, there were a lot of girls there. I was shocked because, you know, it was usually as you and I grew up in that generation back in the day, it was you were in sewing, boys were in woodshop. And now they're opening the doors. And I would ask some of these girls, how do you feel about being here? This is so exciting. And they're like, I love it. I want to go in this industry. So we just got to keep encouraging it. Yeah. Have you guys reached out through like the sport programs that are out there? Because you just keep hey, Marlene's the athletic, whatever. All I'm thinking is like all the soccer girl, you know, all the, you know, because a lot of them. They don't need to go to college. They can make good money this way, you know, right. and no one needs to get a hundred thousand dollars in debt and then make seven, you know, 72,000 and then have all that debt. Yep. So that is true. Yep. You're listening to real estate jerky here on power talk, 1360 KFIV. I'm Marlene Champlin sidekick to our amazing host Ed Parco. And you are listening to the executive director for Valley Builders Exchange, Christine Schweininger. And you're listening to a career change and path and a scholarship program and something that we couldn't even think about 10 years ago, but today we are, and there's a huge need for the trades. So if you're hearing this, you can reach out to Christine at valleybx.com. That's valleybx.com. That's Valley Builders Exchange and uh, their scholarships. You can go online. They actually have a, a way to apply to find out. There's events coming up for the women in construction. You don't want to miss any of that because it's incredible. Um, Christine, you were talking about a woman in particular that's going to be um, the guest speaker at your event in, it's in March, not till March, right? Correct. And that's Mary Tiger, right? Correct. And Mary Tiger is a CEO for Tiger Construction. And Tiger Construction is a, a huge uh, construction company. She grew up, had her work away all the way up and um, does amazing things. And she's I'm her, she came, uh, attended our first uh, women in construction luncheon and said she really, really enjoyed it. So we asked her if she'd come back and uh, consider being a keynote speaker and share all her wealth of knowledge in the industry. And she said, yes. Yeah. So we're super excited. All right. Well, count me in for that. Um, if I can come, you, you don't have to be a woman <laughs> um, for that, no, right? You okay. can come. Correct. <laughs> all right. So we were asked, um, is there anything on local high schools doing to foster yes. trades and women in construction yes. and what else can be done? There are, um, there's a lot of schools, local schools that are, that have programs. Is this in still. Modesto or everywhere? This, no. And I'm talking, um, Stanislaus County. Okay. I don't really know different areas, but in Stanislaus counties, we do have great partnerships with the schools that have the programs currently. And I noticed that even MJC, we're starting to partner with them as well. And they're doing a great job in bringing back a lot of the skilled, um, Trade. So we just had a big meeting on really all of us coming together and partnering because eventually I see it this way. Once they have their skill, they're going to come back to us and they're going to be members and they're going to put back in the funds. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we could promote and give more scholarships. 
Take a drink. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> a little early in the morning to be drinking, though. <laughs> Luckily, it's Saturday. <laughs> a little day drinking. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I, I think this is very important to get people involved because, one, we really need more people in trades. Right. The, the skills, I mean, if you look at the amount of people we need in trades, it's, I mean, it's California, Texas, it's everywhere. And everywhere. I'd, I'd much US. rather be outside in California than Texas. <laughs> That's just my statement there. I've been outside in Texas during the summer. It's not something you want to do. But here, you know, you work in San Jose and other places. It's not that bad. You're right. Yeah. I know a lot of people who live up in Tuolumne County who drive into different places to go to work in the trades because they have union jobs and they make really good money. Right. And that is, you know, a great job. And then they go back up to their house and then weekends they do all this other stuff as a side hustle or whatever. Right. And it's it's just amazing with the skills you learn. I mean, I learned it when I was on my grandfather's dairy. I learned how to weld. I learned how to use, you know, we created stuff that you couldn't go into town and get. Right. And that's based. I, I mean, I'm, I'm thinking right now, Sydney should be getting into this. That's my one daughter. Um, that's, you know, hasn't found where she wants to go yet in life. And she's very artistic, but she's very much athletic. Right. And so she's creative. She could build things and this would be perfect for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, it is. Um, this year, our, our event will be hosted at Doubletree. And last year we had it at the last two times we've had it, it was sold out. So we're going back to Doubletree so we can have more room and hopefully um, be able to have more single tickets. We were only had a table and a half the last two times. So we're excited to move back and open it up more. All right. Got one more question for you. Um, this is from an engineer. Um, can you give us any tips on finding a good contractor, reputable, excellent license? Come to Valley Builders Exchange. We <laughs> have them all. <laughs> we go through all the process of making sure they're licensed and um, we have the partnership. So we have over 400 members in the construction industry. Well, yes, <laughs> that's a lot of people. Anything else we need to add that you want to you know, put forward before we go? No, I just, you know, want to make sure that, you know, for many, many years, we've always pushed four years college degrees, and that is important. But at the same time, if we do have a young one that we know is good with their hands and wants to do something else, we really need to get behind them. We need to encourage them and foster that passion. And all of us as a community, we've got to replenish our pipeline. So that's my word. <laughs> you know what? That's awesome. Thank Christine. Thank you so much. What's the best part of listening to real estate jerky and hanging out with our host, Ed Parco and our iHeart engineer, Mike Murray. Well, I say besides helping cool people like you make your dreams of home ownership come true. It's connecting with the very best of the best in our area. Like Christine today uh, with Valley Builders Exchange. I mean, contractors, we, it's, this is real estate jerky. It's a real estate show. So we are pretty excited um, to connect with her today. And mostly, most of all, um, we're helping you, we hope, uh, live your very best life. I'm Marlene Chaplin, trusty sidekick to our amazing host, Ed Barco, MBA veteran and president of Blending for a Living. If you've got questions, now's the time. Dial 209-404-1915. That's 209 209- 4041915. You're listening to Real Estate Jerky on Power Talk 1360 KFIV. <laughs> and we'll was, be and we'll be right back. That was a, a, that was a long <laughs> sigh there. You can change the way you live out the rest of your life with our new reverse mortgage products from Lending for Living. Our loan limits are the highest available. Call us today at 209-846-9270 or visit lendingforliving.com. Welcome back to Real Estate Jerky here on Power Talk 1360 KFIV, where we always give you something to chew on. I'm Marlene Champlin, sidekick to our amazing host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran and president of Lending for Living. So, Ed, that was very, 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 very cool. Um, I still love the idea of, um, not the idea, the reality of uh, the she builds like you were talking about in right. Utah and, and putting that together with our friend, Christine, and she is our friend. She's in, uh, we're both in Modesto Sunrise Rotary. The all three of us. All three of us. Yeah. Christine <laughs> as well. Making about women. 
<laughs> well, well, it's not because we still, um, we are still at 12% in our Rotary uh, Club women. I hear so. you're going to be president next year. No, year after next. No, I am not. That would be you. No, I'm, that I'm next. The next one after. Yeah, yes, I'm not. Yeah. There's someone supposed to be behind me. Yeah, I'm not good. At, I'm not good at front and center at all. Not at all. Really? Yeah, really. Nope. You're not really front and center. Nope. You're not front and center right now. Nope. Okay. I'm your sidekick, yeah, man. Whatever. Yes. Yeah. I, this is your show, my friend. All right. So, so back to the she built. Yeah. That was, you know, unique. I never knew about that till I ran into that. And it was somebody a couple of years ago who was helping me on some stuff and she went there to help them. And I was like, what the heck's going on? And it was all over Instagram and what they did. And, and that was when I was all learning about Instagram and all that kind of stuff. And so then I was like, there's gotta be something we can do here locally the same way. Right. Not just in Utah. So. Yeah. Well, and the thing I like about it is exactly what I said. And it's true. Uh, the trades are very conducive to family life. So if you're a single mom out there and you are a hustler, you're a go getter and you don't mind getting dirty. It's a great gig. I mean, you might have a little bit of a challenge finding daycare or childcare for that early part of being in the trades. But um, you're off, especially once kids start school. You, you really can make a, tra- a career in the trades work. And if you move up and you get into supervisorial and what? most <laughs> supervisorial, what the heck's a supervisorial? Super, supervisorial position, supervisor, like on a job. I mean, you I'm know, just with you. it sounded <laughs> funny. <laughs> well, I think it's, I think I pronounced it. Yeah, correctly. it's fine. But, um, it, it really is conducive to family life. Um, but, right, and most important thing right now is you can get in. Yeah, there isn't this. Okay, you got to know Johnny George or somebody no. else who knows who runs mm-hmm. the the union over mm-hmm. here. Who mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and then if you give him a little money, he gets you into the thing. If they take part of your wages for the that's, first two years, that, that was is, that was New York for a while. There, that was lots of places for yeah. a long time, yeah. but it's not like that right yeah. now. It really isn't like that right now. And the soup, the um, certification programs for any of them are short we're talking two years max for most all of them, including welding, um, which (laughs) gets me excited. I always loved welding. I loved welding. And I always thought if I ever got into the arts at all, I would, I would do found art and met work in metal. I love it. And uh, you can go get that program right now. MJC offers a really good one. There are several places. The other thing that's really cool about Valley Builders Exchange, I'm taking over the show. I don't want to, no, but Ed, it's exciting. I'm letting you talk. You're it's all excited a, about it. I am excited it's, about it. You are a woman. <laughs> Valley Builders Exchange actually has a lot of scholarship programs and what Christine was talking about with their members are willing to pay. So ladies, you can get off the dole you can get off the dole and get a really great career. And then think of the example that you will be to your children, Mm -hmm. not just your girls, but your boys too, to to show what it's like to work and, and, and earn your own way. That's the part I like too. I struggled almost my entire life um, being able to earn enough to support my family. It was very difficult as a single mom. Always, always it was difficult. It was never, <laughs> that's why I like the Navy, the Navy SEALs motto. The only easy day was yesterday because <laughs> you freaking survived it. But um, in the trades, it's a very satisfying career. Well, it's about what you can do, mm-hmm. right? What you, yep. you, what you're, you're skilled at, not what you can show you did, but what you're skilled at and, and how the better you are, the more money you make and the more time. Cause that's like welding. I mean, welding is a skill that you have to work at. I mean, practice it. If you don't practice it for years, I tried, I welded the other day a while back and it's like, <laughs> damn, that's the worst weld I've ever seen in my life. But when I was 14, I could weld like nobody's business, mm-hmm. you know? Yep. Yeah. When you do it every day. I mean, yeah. And you just, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, so, and that's, you know, that's a skill and that skill you can use anywhere. I mean, you could build, you know, container homes as a welder because <laughs> you need that welding and other, I mean, do it. There's so much you can do. And I'm just glad the opportunity is there for everyone carpentry, all kinds of stuff. You're listening to Real Estate Jerky here on Power Talk 1360 KFIV with our host, Ed Parco, MBA veteran, mortgage expert, and president of Lending for Living. If you've got questions for Ed, you can reach out by dialing 209-404-1915. I want to ask some real estate questions. All right, ask them. So um, it seems crazy. Is it crazy as it feels? 
What do you mean by crazy? Well, the interest rates are erratic. Yeah, but that's, you know, interest rates are interest rates. I mean, I've been hearing from gurus out there and you brought them to my attention the other day. They're saying stuff that we, I've been saying on the show and I've been saying on our lives that we have at 830 Monday through Friday um, for with different agents. And we talk about it. It's the interest rate doesn't matter today. What I mean by that is it, we're going to be in that interest rate for a very short ter- time. And this is how we know that. We can't get a rate with yield, which means to pay for closing costs because the investors understand that that loan is going to be there for a very short time. So they still need to get paid when they buy it because it is a mortgage backed security that somebody needs to buy to make money on. If they don't, they're not going to buy it and then we don't have money to do lending. So they're seeing, they're saying that we're going to be in these rates for a very short time. So do take advantage of where we're at and the fact that people are scared and not understanding they they don't understand what's going on out there. So they're not looking at homes and they're not shopping. Right. You can, your offer is going to get accepted. It is. Right and now. also you yep. can get closing costs, which before they're like, what? You ain't going to get nothing. To, I'll go to the guy behind me. Meaning the seller, the, the sellers, sellers are like, willing I'm not to work. Do it. Yeah, yes. Now they're willing because they're as nervous as other people. Plus a they're starting to see a little bit more inventory, not crazy inventory, just a little bit more. Um, there are um, landlords who are putting their houses on the market because they think it's the top of the market when yep. it's not. We've talked about this many times before. If you look at the numbers, we're not going to be in a bubble. We don't have enough homes. We need with the extra homes that we're building, that's 200,000 extra a year right now uh, with a shortage of 4.3 million. Fannie Mae saying it's going to take 19 years to get caught up. So this, this whole construction thing we talked about today, Everything about the labor being short, everything about not having enough product because they're stuck in containers, they can't get over here, China shut down. This is all causing this problem to stay for a very long time. Right. It's not going to fix overnight. No. So we're going to not see a bubble because we we don't, most people have, 68% of the people out there um, have a mortgage on there that's an equity that is most we've ever seen, right? Because right. the other people don't have a loan. <laughs> right, 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 right. And so, okay. So, so one of the things that I've been hearing a lot from, I'm not going to say name names because I don't want to get sued, but uh, a lot of the other experts that have been on the air longer, not, not that they're any more expert than you are, Ed, are absolutely saying what you've been saying all along is, um, and what your motto is, building personal right. wealth through home ownership. Right. The cool thing about buying in California or around here is that you always, if you just stay with it, you're going to get more than you invest always. It's yeah. such a great investment. Here's an example. I had appraisal done on my house. I thought I was going to come in at something and came in a hundred grand over what I thought. It was what you come. thought the expert, what right. you thought, cause right. that's the market we're in. Right. And that, and what that means is the value that's out there right now is just, I don't want it's not ridiculous. It's just where we've went through when you go up 20% a year for multiple years, that's a problem. And <laughs> what I mean by that is because then there's no affordability of homes because people get priced out. The issue right now is you have the government who wants to come in and do affordable housing and their affordable housing is a million dollar units in San Francisco. Give me a break. Why don't we do affordable housing somewhere else and help real people get into homes? In Hickman. <laughs> yeah, well, I didn't want to say that or Delhi. Delhi, yeah. Yeah, the mayor. Actually, they're building a lot of houses around the outside. A lot. Uh, What's Merced. a lot? Well, they're building. Thousands. They're building. When I look around here in Modesto, we're not building hardly anything. We're, we're not building. We used to build. A, we're not building. We used we're to build building. a thousand homes a year here in Modesto. We're not building. And, and we're and at yet, 100. It, I was in Merced County on the outskirts. They're building like crazy comparatively. Comparatively. Oh, crazy. I mean, if you look at Patterson, they're building, right? Mm -hmm. But that's still not enough homes. No. And they can't get no. stuff to finish them. They're behind. They're doing this. They're, they're not even getting them under contract. There's a lot of stuff going on that we don't know about. I mean, because the same thing's happening in Nevada. I know we got to go. But anyway, it's one <laughs> of those things. End of our show. I want to mm -hmm. thank you for joining us today. And I want to thank to today's guest, Christine what, how do you say your last name? Schweninger. Schweninger. Thank you. <laughs> Executive Director of Valley Builders Exchange in Modesto. You can check out all their programs, scholarships, and reach out to them at valleybx.com. So that's valleybx.com. And you can also catch this show on our podcast, wherever you listen to your favorite podcast, on, or you can just download the iHeart app on your mobile device. In the weeks ahead, we'll be talking to Chris Martin, Director of United Several Palsy. 
We're going to have some some 4th of July patriotic friends and our stock market expert will be joining us. Please keep a cool head out there and be safe. And remember, we're proud to live in this land of opportunity where you can still build personal wealth through home ownership. We'll keep bringing you something to chew on here at Real Estate Jerky. And we'll be broadcasting Saturdays at noon and Sundays at 10 a.m. You can always find us via podcast. Like I said, anywhere at your podcast apps, just search Real Estate Jerky. Thanks for being here, Marlene. You're going to be here next week? Yes. All right. <laughs> My end of us license number is 235384. We'll talk to you next week. Because we got small tanks.